Hi, I'm Mike Haddock and today we're at the World of Concrete in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm with David Ordell from Ordell's Complete Concrete in California. And when I found out he was coming here, I contacted him and uh, I'm lucky because he's going to show me how to do all this stuff and go around here. So, say hello David. Yeah, hi. This uh, is our first day here at the uh, World of Concrete. Uh, met up with Mike from Pennsylvania. He's seen me on YouTube. I've seen a few of his videos. So we're going to walk around here and look at all the products and kind of talk to the vendors and see what's new and what's going to work. What works on the East Coast doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work on the West Coast. So we're going to go through different building techniques, East versus West type of deal throughout the whole show. So anyway, uh, stay tuned. We're going to keep posting stuff as we go through. This is one of the outside exhibitions they have, this is humongous, this uh, World of Concrete show. The World of Concrete is so huge, I'm just going to go around and show you samples, mostly of just what uh, I'm interested in that works for something, somebody like me. See the block and brick competition. The world of concrete, and they're having uh, the bricklaying contest. You're not going to catch me out there. This is something interesting. Uh, cast stone makes it uh, pre made, looks like regular limestone, and they put in their looks like Capcons. They do these rock walls. This is the finished product. That's the company over there. And here's some of the background to it. They got this wire, wire mesh, or they put it over styrofoam. Then they put it out and they use this to kind of stamp it. And uh, I'm going to show you the film on how that, that looks when it's done. There's the guy doing it right there. concrete spacers when you're putting concrete in put these little plastic things in right here this holds up uh, the wire when you're pouring it these are for some higher things uh, I'm Randy Brash from with Tough Bar uh, we've been involved in developing and manufacturing fiberglass rebar for 20 years. The last 10 years, 12 years, it's starting to take off. 
Uh, yeah, I think this stuff definitely has some use. Uh, you, where, you, where you're getting some corrosive areas, I mean, uh, this isn't going to uh, rust. So it's going to last a lot longer than your standard rebar for sure. Here's another place. This is all fiberglass, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it won't corrode. It won't so anywhere corrode. where you've got... Do you bend these in the field or pre-made? So with the rubber, with the, obviously you can cut the straights, but the bend... Oh, yeah. This fiberglass mesh is three times stronger than steel mesh. Four times lighter. Oh, yeah. Wow. So steel mesh. Yeah. Hot flat? Uh, price is similar, but what's good about this, it doesn't rust. It doesn't conduct temperature and electricity, so great for the swimming pools as well. MDS, and uh, they make drains. And they got a little demonstrate different kind of drains for different kind of things in the concrete. And this is like a filtrating system where it captures the water and then it slowly leaches out, correct? Here's an automatic machine. Of these and makes it flat. It's laser guided and laser guided. Yeah. And it's a vibrator right there. this came to look like they just got a stick and they scratched it out right here to make it look like a stone patio not a bad idea electric wheelbarrow yeah hi I mean, what we're looking at here is a motorized basically a wheelbarrow wow with tracks on it so you yeah. can travel through any kind of debris any mud you're not gonna get stuck Hi, uh, my name is Terry Kobayashi and I'm with Max USA. Today I'll be performing a demonstration for our RB441T, the new twin tire. This is the sixth generation one. Uh, our first tool came in, in out in 1983 and this is what we have in 2019. It's about half a second per shot and it actually uses precise amounts of wire depending on the rebar. So on a 4x4 rebar, you can pass to 240 ties per spool, which is a significant boost in capacity. For a battery charge, it's about 4,000 shots. So, again, more efficient because you don't have to do as much uh, recharging. Here's something new. Where they, uh, I guess it's not new. He said it's from the 80s, right? Yep. This is a positional coupler, so you can yeah. adjust it both ways. Okay. And then you just put yeah. the rebar yeah. on top of each other so you don't have to go down like we still do back where I live. No overlapping. This is rebar that's epoxy coated. Yep. Right? You know, unless, unless and then comes off. you can see the different systems they got to put rebar on top of rebar. These are some of the types of forms they use when you're pouring a concrete wall. And this is the kind of stuff you put between them. Now you, pour it in place. Right. Now you can make this, these walls, see these walls here? can make them look like brick. These are form liners. You put them in and then staple them in against there. When you pour the concrete, you take the forms off. It looks like you did brickwork. This is some forms for forming, metal forms for forming uh, some fancy looking steps and everything. Different kind of things to hold the forms together. Hi, I'm Eric Pichalowski. I'm a director of sales for Laticrete International. I'm here with my buddy Mike from uh, a fellow Northern Pennsylvanian. What we're about to show is our Spartacoat MVB moisture vapor barrier uh, with a broadcast system in it. Our Spartacoat line is a, a line of resinous coatings that can go anywhere from industrial applications to airport hangars to car garages to pretty much anywhere that you need a coating. So you put this coating down and then immediately you put How much? the 
up here is the rock side. You, you broadcast the chip. These are vinyl chip that they're broadcasting into it. Right. You can also broadcast our colored quartz. So you can do a quartz or a vinyl chip. Hours, as we like call it, right? Now. Chickens. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's a good Pennsylvania saying. Yeah. 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 And, uh, That'll dry as early as two hours for foot traffic, full service, and uh, 24. So you just throw it out and then... Uh, so you let it sit four to six hours, as Alejandro was just saying. Right. And then you get you you will scrape the chips three ways to remove anything that is laying. This is the eighth inch chip. This is eighth inch chip with the beige right. a beige motif, okay. if you will. Right. And this is quarter inch chip with a little bit bigger pieces of vinyl chips. Right. That's quarter inch chip. So you get a couple different looks when you do different colors, or when you do different size chips. Here's a interesting concrete tool. They got different sizes. Here's a concrete tool. Old school. We used to do it out of wood. We still, my dad still has some of these. Here's some uh, huge drilling bits. You can see how big that is. And over here we all have different kind for drilling holes to concrete. My name is Mike Grant. I'm with Sanders Saws, Honeybrook, Pennsylvania. We manufacture diamond blades, the actual segments themselves that are shop in Honeybrook. These are some of our products. Right. And you make these blades down in down in Honeybrook, huh? You actually have the shop down there where you make them. Yep. These are um, some of the specialty blades that we make for different types of grinding to save time. Here we have uh, some diamond tools here. And I would use something like that to get down into the concrete to put railings in, maybe. Okay. Uh, this is our hydraulic chainsaw. Uh, you can hook it up to one of our hydraulic power units uh, or a bobcat skid steer tractor. Uh, the chains will go cutting depth anywhere from 10 inches up to 30 inches. It's all hydraulic. And you can cut right through a concrete wall with concrete this Concrete wall, right through rebar. All diamond blade, right through rebar. Yes. And Everything. You plunge cut right in. All right, let's look at what it hooks up to over here. Okay. This is our gas power unit. All right, that's what it hooks up to. It's yes. a gas power unit. Yep. And you also, we have a three-phase electric, uh -huh. and then we have the bigger uh, unit that you can actually run two tools off of it at once. Okay, what's the name of the company? Uh, RGC, Ryman and Georgia Corporation. Okay, this is like a full floor saw where you could cut curbs out to do something like yeah, that. This looks like a nice tool here uh, for cutting concrete yep. without having to get on your hands and knees. They've yeah. got, they've, what they've done is they've made an attachment for a right angle grinder and they've just mounted it on that pole. Yeah, good idea. This we're in is mostly the scaffolding section. All different types of scaffold. So I'm just going to hit a couple of them. Uh, this is the kind of scaffold that we've got. We've got all kinds of uh, different options. We've got twin mass climbers, single mass climbers, compact units, crank up. Uh, so whatever you need. Let me get that up there. That's the kind of buildings you work on, those real high-rise buildings. Do high-rise, do low-rise, do anything that needs scaffolding. Hi, I'm Serena, and uh, um, our company is Qingdao Jinchenhui uh, Machinery and Technology Limited. Yes, we are a scaffolding manu manufacturer in China. Uh, as you can see, we produce many kinds of scaffolding. This is a real long scaffolding. We supply supply this uh, kind of scaffolding to America to our customers in America. Okay. So this is called the ND system, which is manufactured in South Korea. Um, Daegu is the city of manufacture. Currently supplied um, in large quantities to the Japanese market, in particular a company called Nikon. It's been used on the uh, new Tokyo Olympic construction sites. Hi, this is the IQ MS362 16 and a half inch masonry saw featuring uh, integrated dust control. Each machine has an uh, integrated vacuum filtration and dust containment unit. <laughs> and when, it used, when it's used, it captures up to 99.5% of the dust. So why don't we take a look at the cut? I'm Dean Garbutt, I'm from Spec Mix in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is one of our regular silo systems. This is a G7000 silo with one of our new dust shrouds. Uh, 
Opposite over here is another G7000 with a gas drive auger system already attached to it, all set to go. Very portable, uh, dry to wet. So you put the mix in the top, you have mortar coming out the bottom. Okay. Um, now we're looking at the triple field leak here, uh, connected to the robotic toll station 873 with the green laser. Right. Uh, and this is this will square a building, correct? Correct. Correct. So, so over here we use this laser which is over there and then somehow it reads it and this this will tell you if you're square. Correct. So you'll upload your drawing to here. You upload your drawing to there. So right now we don't have the drawing in there. Um, they're just doing a surface module right. um, where you can see whether the concrete pour was too high, too low. Um, but you could do your points on the, the four corners. Right. You go, you measure them out, you square it, and you could do measurements between them. Hi, I'm Cody Seiler with Gilson Company out of Lewis Center, Ohio. And we just have a nice display here of some basic concrete testing equipment. We have a slump cone, two variations, a metal one and a plastic one. Over here, we have a type B air meter to so use for air and train concrete. See what your air content is. We have a super air meter, it does the same thing, but a few other things, such as uh, air void distribution. We have a roll meter volumetric method of testing air. And after that is our unit weight of concrete setup. So, this is our deep foam injection system for uh, pumping our foam deep into the ground to add strength to it. Okay, just to raise concrete that are sunk. Yes, to raise okay. concrete. Kip's gonna let us know. We're gonna probably bring this edge up here. Probably, I'd say about a half an inch or so is what we're gonna shoot for. It'll be a half inch higher than this area. And you can see that slab is continual, continually going up and up and up. So Kip's gonna call it at a quarter inch, as you can see. There's a lot of polishing companies here like this. Now, I don't polish concrete. If you ever walked into Kmart or any of those places, that's what you see. Oh. Hi, I'm Dan Grady. I'm Director of Sales and Marketing for Concrete Polishing Solutions. And we, uh, we sell machinery and equipment, chemicals, and tooling to uh, mechanically polish concrete, dry or wet. where most of our uh, machinery is, the concrete trucks, etc. Now we're in uh, the section of the pumper trucks and the uh, lulls and the skidsters. Well, this is uh, the end of the show. I followed David around. He's been here before. He showed me around real good. He even gave me a shirt. So what would you think of the show, David? Uh, the show's great. It's it's huge. You need the, the whole um, four days. It's a five-day event. Friday's a half day, but the four um, days, Monday through Thursday, you need it all to really cover everything because we've got they've got three outdoor lots here, and they've got another. They've got the South, Central, and North Halls indoor stuff. So you need the, all the time for sure. And uh, we 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 found a lot of new technology out here new things that could really help and make the jobs a lot easier out in the field. Although for me, since I really just kind of do a lot of residential, you know, there's only maybe one hall that really is, hits spot on for the stuff that I do. And that's like the decorative end of it. So I probably use maybe 20% of everything in this place. I don't know about you, Mike, but. Well, I, I picked up on some stuff. I seen them do some uh, stamp concrete which it'd be good for like a sunroom or something in Pennsylvania. I thought they, that was a good idea. I'm gonna do a video on that. And I looked around and I seen stuff I never seen before. So if you're a masonry contractor or you're gonna go in, it's a good place to visit. It's overwhelming and maybe 10% because I'm cheap and I'm an old schooler, but yeah, it was, it was fun. So David, thanks for he got me going on this place here. He got showed me around and everything. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's okay. been fun. Maybe next year I'm going to get into the uh, masonry contest, block setting, brick laying. Uh, I don't know if it'll be me personally, but I want to uh, represent somebody that um, I can train to uh, be in here. And I want to sponsor someone to get in the contest on Odell behalf, basically. I'm gonna, that's what I'm thinking I may do in the future. Possibly. How about you got any ideas about that, Mike? 
Oh, so I'm like retire. that sponsoring, <laughs> maybe uh, bringing up yeah. a, someone young that can play some block and uh, you know sponsor out here, lay right. some brick down. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing too. This guy throwing it around, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, you can check out my uh, on my channel. Mike's got a lot of individual vendors out here, interviews of products. But what I did on mine, what I'm going to show is. Uh, we have the actual uh, contest footage. We got we got some nice media passes, so we got the bird's eye view, down view of the winners of the brick lane contest. We'll throw that up on the video. Maybe a couple little odds and ends. But Mike really got in with the heart of these people out here and the vendors, and uh, he made some really good contacts and he did some good one-on-one -on -one interviews. So I'm looking forward to seeing that myself. Anyway, have a good one, and uh, it was a it was a pleasure, David. We're gonna do it again somehow, some way. All, All right, right. Thank you very much.